Hello, welcome to this video on method of levels. I'm Warren Mansell. I'm a researcher in clinical psychology at the University of Manchester, and I've been researching and training method of levels for a number of years now. Kuba Zezuka and myself have been working on coding this session of therapy to show how it may work. The therapist in the recording is me, and the client is Danny Whittaker. Danny has already uploaded the recording to his own site, for which a link is included below. The visual for this session is a coding scheme developed by myself and Sally Higginson. Method of Levels is based on perceptual control theory, which proposes that psychological distress is loss of control. The most pernicious factor underlying loss of control is conflict, wanting two incompatible outcomes at the same time. The Method of Levels therapist has two goals to keep the client talking about the problem that is at the foreground of their awareness and to help bring the client's attention to their background thoughts at the edge of their awareness. Through this questioning, the clients get to talk openly about their current experiences as they occur. They get to share their thoughts about what it is they're doing that is a problem. They get to describe their conflicts that they may have in their life. And maybe most importantly, they get to see this whole issue from a higher perspective, one that relates to their identity, ideals, values and self-concept. We have labelled these four different aspects of the problem. Present moment perception. Awareness of arbitrary control, which is just noticing one side of a conflict. Awareness of goal conflict and awareness of high level goals. From moving through to this higher perspective, spontaneous changes are thought to eventually help resolve goal conflict through a process known as reorganisation. Reorganisation is a built-in process that drives our learning and helps us solve problems by trial and error as we keep our attention fixed on an issue. It is going on all the time, but it is thought that our awareness directs it to the places where it can make a difference. This coding scheme is designed to illustrate how a client's foreground awareness on a problem appears to go deeper and last longer in the way that the theory suggests. It aims to show how the client becomes aware of different aspects of their problem as they are talking about them, bringing them into the foreground of their awareness as they put them into words. The coding scheme is not designed to pick up on the many subtle, brief shifts in awareness that the therapist picks up on as background thoughts. Rather, it's designed to show how what is at the forefront of a client's awareness may change over time in a way that we might predict from the theory. The coding scheme is arranged as a matrix with the upward direction indicating greater depth of awareness and the rightward direction showing longer duration of awareness. And then potential reorganisation is coded in the right hand column. When spontaneous changes seem to appear in what Danny is saying, We've coded this as a potential reorganisation, but of course it's just an inference. As you listen to the session and read the transcript of what myself and Danny are saying, you can see the codes on the screen. As the session progresses, you can see what we are interpreting as Danny's focus of awareness shifting in a way that makes a difference to the problems he came to discuss. It is really important to bear in mind that only the client truly knows where their awareness is at any one time. This scheme is only based on making an inference from the content of what the client is saying. We cannot say with certainty what another person is actually aware of. So the coding scheme has very different aims from the MOL therapist. The MOL therapist never assumes and continues to remain alert and curious attention can shift at any moment. The MOL therapist must admit that they never have the answers. They don't even have suggestions. Their job is always to do or not to do the most simple thing they can to help the client work it out for themselves. We hope that by watching this video, you yourself get a deeper and broader awareness of what method of levels and perceptual control theory are all about. Control, conflict and reorganization. Okay. All right. So, what is playing on your mind at the moment? What's playing on my mind at the moment and has been for a while is 
I've so I've attended a clinical trial in metacognitive therapy mm-hmm. had all sorts of shit going on mm-hmm. and that helped me cope with a lot of it it helps eradicate a lot of things turn the volume down um, and the remaining issues which I'll get to mm-hmm. it's enabled me to cope with them mm-hmm. so I still live my life in spite of those things mm-hmm. but I can't shake the agoraphobia the, okay. and what I mean by that is Every time I go out, mm-hmm. when I'm leaving, when I'm about to leave the house, I've got to go somewhere, I'm dreading it. Right. Let me be more specific. If it's somewhere of a certain distance, it's going to be of a certain time. So I'm right into the shop, let's say, around the corner, right. something like that. You're totally smiling about that, what's popping into you. Um... Well, I'm, I'm amused by the idea of proximity, the idea of this proximity going on. Okay. Because, yeah, if it's close and it's I'm not going out for very long, I'm fine. If it's okay. far away or I'm going out for a long time, that's when I get stressed out. Okay. And from the moment I step out the door, my mind switches to a kind of high alertness of what's going on around me and... Then slowly but surely, over the course of an hour, say, physical symptoms starts kicking: depersonalization, okay. dizziness, right. okay. slight nausea sometimes. Okay. Like I say, I, can't, I crack on regardless. Okay. But it's, pre- it's pretty reliable. That okay. Any of those feelings here right now as you're talking? That would trip my balance off a little bit. As a, what from, does that? Mean? <laughs> that means, um, yeah. So parts. Probably about 10 minutes away from here. Yeah. Um, and the walk here, that 10 minute walk here, uh-huh. is when I felt those okay. symptoms kicking in. Yeah. So slightly, when I say tripping my bollocks off, yeah. <laughs> the, that would be a little bit, feeling a little bit spaced out, a little bit deep, a okay. little bit of depersonalization. Spaced out right now. A little bit. How much, like, if naught was not told and 10 was. Completely spaced out. Yeah, about a, about a two or three. Okay. I'm recognising it. And is that how much of a problem is that? Um, it's an annoyance. Right. Well, you really paused while you were working that out. Well, because it, like I say, it's not a. It doesn't feel like a problem per se. In that, hmm. I've come here in spite of it. Hmm. Give it a couple of years ago. Um, I might have got out of the car. Walked a little bit, felt it kicking in, and gone. Oh, well, I'm going. Yeah. I'm going back to the car, okay. and then made me excuses mm-hmm. and cancelled. Mm-hmm. But I've just, I just get on in spite of it now. Okay. It's like I say, it's a, it's kind of a, a lingering inconvenience rather okay. than a. And again, a, you're sort of smiling as you're saying the lingering inconvenience. <laughs> it's going through your head, isn't it? Hmm. Okay, <laughs> I'm questioning now whether if it's <clears throat> if it's not such a problem and it's more of an inconvenience, why not just yeah just crack on anyway? Like maybe this isn't going to do anything anyway, Would you or maybe it's not. Maybe it's not worth doing. <laughs> That's well, tricky. This, Ten minutes in, into that. as in this session. Yeah, in, yeah. If it's not so much a problem, what are you here for? Kind of thing. If I can live in spite of it, um, just crack on. And how does that sound as you say crack on? Well, it's not the best. Not when the I think, best. when I think of it more kind of long term. So in the moment now, um, let's say I'm in it slightly, feeling the symptoms slightly. When they're really intense, it's fucking horrendous. And does that still happen? From time to time it does. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but not today? No, not today. Not yet. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, when I think about just telling myself, just crack on with it. 
it's a bit of a depressing idea to right. think well, you're stuck like this for the rest of your life. What, what's popping into your head as you're thinking depressing idea? I don't know if I believe listeners aren't going to like this. I don't know if I believe that you can fully recover from being fucked up. Hmm. Do you want to? Do I want to believe it? Yeah. Or do you want to? Yeah. I'd like to believe it. I'd like to think no. you can do, but I kind of think that you're. You know that Nietzsche. Have you heard that Nietzsche quote where he says, "You stare into the abyss, and the abyss will stare back into you." Mm-hmm. And that always kind of reminds me of. I kind of feel that once you've seen into kind of the your own sort of inner malevolence, the own mm-hmm. depths of yourself, you can't unsee that. Okay. Once you, you have seen that. Yeah. Right. That's that's what I mean. How are you seeing it now? I'm not in it now, but I've I, I can I can certainly picture it, conceptualise it. Pop your eyes over there. What was? I think I'm trying to I'm trying to picture it. I'm trying to picture those times when I'm. Yeah, in it, when I'm in that. And what I mean specifically by when I'm, when I'm in it, it's, it's those, it's the physical sensations that are happening when I'm out and about that are the things that bother me the most. So you're talking about inner malevolence and now you're talking about physical sensations. Yeah. Mm. How do they... Like, well, because I know that it's me. I, I, I don't believe. I'm not one of these people. I don't believe in chemical imbalances and things okay, like that. Okay. It's I've done this to myself. Okay, that's what you mean. By yeah. Adam's, Adam's, yeah. I've done this to myself, and but like I said, how sure are you about that? How sure am I that yeah. I've done it? I'm pretty sure. I mean, right. yeah, I can. I've analysed the shit out of myself, mm. and. I haven't had a bad upbringing or anything like that. I don't think, you know, I've got no kind of Freudian archaeological traumas going on or anything like that. I just mm-hmm. feel... I've, I've done this to myself over the past few years, for definite. That's for definite now? Yeah, it's for definite. And what's that like, knowing it's definite? What's it like knowing that I've definitely done this to myself? I just, uh, I just, it's, oh, it's the old one. I wish I knew then what I know now. Right. Because I could have avoided all this, <laughs> I think. Yeah. What were you just glancing at? <laughs> I was just making sure that what I, that I believed what I, I've said. I've, I've okay. articulated myself properly, yeah. and I have done. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Where do you want to go with this now, Danny? The thing that's intrigued me about this kind of therapy mm-hmm. is this idea of having conflicting goals mm-hmm. simultaneously. And some that I might not be aware of. Mm-hmm. And what confuses me is, even though I can go out, I can be fine, I can socialise, I can do all those things, I don't understand, I don't know what it is that's stressing me out at that at that physical level. Mm-hmm. Something's, something's stressing me out, it must be. And because it, like I say, it's, it's, it's very, it's very reliable. Yeah. And do you want to know what it is? I definitely, definitely uh-huh. want to know what really it is. Yeah. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. The... I feel like if I could figure out what is bothering me so much, if I could kind of, if I could, maybe if I could go out and hold it in awareness and know about it, I might, it might not affect me so much, or whether, I don't know, more like this kind of caricatured Freudian idea that I'll just have a a eureka moment and go, oh, that's Mm -hmm. what it is, Mm -hmm. and it won't bother me anymore. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, what does it look like? What does what look like? 
this thing that gets in the way of you going out and stresses you out. I don't know if... The thing that's most obvious to me is that, let's say, when I walk outside, there's an immediate shift of awareness. Mm-hmm. When I'm at home, I can just crack on, do whatever. I'm not in my own head. But the moment it comes to going out, do you remember the Terminator? You know in the Terminator when it shows you his point of view and you can see all the numbers going down the sides and all that and he's analysing things. Right. That's what I feel like I slip into that mode as soon as okay. I walk out the house. And is that, is that a problem? Or how much, how much of a problem is that? Yeah, that's a problem. I don't like that. What, what's, what's going on there that's a problem? It's like about estimate. It's like mm-hmm. it feels like ninety percent of my awareness is on myself, on my internal mm-hmm. set bodily sensations, not so much mm-hmm. thoughts. Mm-hmm. And I'm just I can't get out of it. I can't put my attention elsewhere once that like I've turned my attention to myself, mm-hmm. it's there regardless of what I do, regardless okay. of how much I try and relax or I tell myself, okay. it's fine, we've done this a million times. So when you step out of the house, it's 90%, and it's a long journey for a while, it's 90% away yeah, it's, from uh, the it's, body. Yeah, it's all, it's all, it's all right about. Now, how much is on your body? Yeah, we're a bit, I'd say we're about five or six. 50, 60%. Yeah, yeah, out yeah, okay. yeah. And, and what would be right? Oh, there's a smile there. What was that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm laughing at. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Hmm. What would be about, what would be about the right level right now that you think was about right for this situation? Zero. Zero, just so the, no the, attention on your body. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no kind of self awareness like no that. Readouts, at all. Like in the, the no Terminator, no Terminator POV or anything. No, yeah. yeah, like that. Like that's how you'd like it to be. Yeah, because yeah, there are situations where I'm like that. You mm-hmm. know, when I'm at home, when I'm with my family. Um, yeah, there's there's plenty of times like that. Mm-hmm. Um, like I say, there's been other things. There was a time what when. Just popped in your head? Well, I'm, I'm going to kind of give you a comparative sort of analysis now of, of the sort of the progress I've made. So, at my worst, I was having panic attacks all the time. Don't really get them anymore. Uh, struggling with, what they call it, monophobia. Didn't like being on my own. Right. I, I really didn't like right. being left on my own. Yeah. Not so fussed about that anymore. Right. Um, depression. I don't get a sense of hopelessness or anything like that anymore. Loads of things I've, I've kind of sorted out. Hmm. Well, how does but that sound, telling you that? A bit of a double-edged sword, really. Right, go on. Well, on the one hand, it's nice to think, well, you know, I've, I've made progress, but I've not made enough. Well, where's that coming from, then? Not made enough. I I know better than this. I know better to be stuck in this frame of mind to be mm. behaving like this. Do you know what you I mean? Know, like you know better. I know better in the sense of this is what I do now. I read about all these therapies. I read about psychological theory. I read about mental health. I know quite mm-hmm. a lot about it. Mm-hmm. I'm not in that space where it's new to me. I'm lost and confused. Right. I know my shit. Mm-hmm. And I preach this stuff to people all the time. Mm-hmm. And I've applied it to other things. Like mm-hmm. I say, the monophobia, the panic 
some panic yeah. attacks. What? I don't know what the fuck is going on with this one. The, I don't What's know what... this bit where you can... Honing in, that's some... Right. That yeah, for, for the listener, I'm, I'm kind of doing a pinpointing gesture. Yeah, that's, oh, is that something that you do, honing on things? Uh, yes. Yes, it is, obviously. I hone in on my... On those phys- physical sensations a lot. Right. I was I was I was knocking the ball back over the net. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't, I don't I just I don't I don't know what else to do. Besides. Besides everything I've tried. You know, do, bit... do you need to do something else? Yeah, I, I need I need to figure out why specifically going out is an issue. Mm-hmm. And what difference will it make in you now? I feel like it'll um, <clears throat> it might. It, it might, I don't know, it might reveal something to me. It might maybe the right thing to avoid or the right thing to do or... How's it going to reveal? Well, there's been, there's, yeah, there's been plenty of times over the past few years when I've had like little aha moments. Mm-hmm. Something's kind of clicked into place and mm-hmm. um, it makes me, I have a moment of realisation. Mm-hmm. Um I suppose that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking to figure it out. What it is. Mm -hmm. What it is that makes me, the moment I walk out the front door, go, right, attention on self. How far have you got with that? Fucking no, no, nowhere. Yeah. That's a big laugh. Yeah, I'm not... (laughs) Well, I can... I can see, I can see the humour in it. I can see the humour in it. It is. What, 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 what's the funny bit? Well, the idea of a grown man, uh-huh. nearly thirty-five years old, just kind of struggling to get out and about, and that when I do it, it's like, yay! <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just—it's silly, isn't it? It's it, going like going out for the day. What's this? Clapping. Well, I'm, th- <laughs> I'm thinking of sometimes, like, me and my missus will go out somewhere, uh-huh. uh, and, like, I'll manage to stick it out, and I'll, you know, without falling to the floor, foaming at the mouth or something, uh-huh. and then she'll say, oh, you know, I'm proud of you, and it's like, yeah. bugging hell, you're proud of me for going out. <laughs> it's just a bit, it's a bit daft, isn't it? What's daft bit? Well, like I say, I'm a grown man. <laughs> grown man. Yeah, I'm a grown ass man, and the idea of like, yay for you, you went out for a couple of hours. <laughs> it's not the biggest achievement, is it? Well, how big do you think it is? I don't think it's big. You don't think it's big, but you're clapping yourself as you do. I'm being yeah, it's, I'm, I'm being sarcastic. It's like yay me. So you don't ever do that, or you do do that. Oh, I do that too. Yeah, like I say, when, when me... you do it and you're sarcastic. About it. Yes, when my girlfriend mm-hmm. will say to me, like, oh, I'm, I'm so proud of you for doing that, or whatever. Like, I took my, I took my little, I've got a little baby girl, she's like four months now, and I was looking after her for the day and took her to Manchester City Centre. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, I told my other half about it. She was like, oh, I'm so proud of you. Like I say, it's like, yay me. So you're thinking about that, weren't you? Mm. And mm. do you want to tell me about what you were thinking about, or do you want to tell me about the, the yay me? What, what do you want to go with? All right, I'll... <clears throat> yeah, what I was thinking then was I was remembering actually going out to Manchester with mm-hmm. my little girl. Yeah. And I fucking hate... And I can't emphasise this enough. Mm. I fucking hate that when I'm out with my kids, I'm distracted by this. That sometimes mm-hmm. it's getting that intense mm-hmm. that all I want to do is get it over with and get the fuck out of there. So it could even be, I could be at the beach with my kids, I could be doing something really nice 
that should be really nice. But because I'm starting to feel that sort of sickness coming over me, I just want, I don't care how nice it is, I just want to get out of there. I want it over with. I want to just be at home and say, right, we've done it. Because when I'm at home, it's automatic. I shut the door and it starts dissipating and I start calming down. And I hate that. You hate it? I I fuck... Fucking hate that, yeah. Hmm. And when do you hate it the most? Are we talking situationally or conceptually? Just maybe situation, but it's up to you. I hate it the most when I th- realise what I'm doing in the long run. Hmm. Because that's makes me a shitty dad. Huh. <laughs> oh, here we go. We're getting there now. Are you... <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing to see? Well, I... I, I knew... I, th- I, I suspected this might come up. But I've not been able to connect it to... <laughs> what it's got to do with the agoraphobia but oh. yeah that's uh, are there any connections going on there? I don't know um, I don't know maybe because <clears throat> like I say it happens when I'm out with my kids but it happens when I'm not with them Just coughing. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I wonder whether this that, that that idea of being a shitty dad does bother me. But then, how that's... how shitty are you worried about being? Well, I know my little boy's turned turning seven. So he's getting to the point where he knows something's wrong now. Huh. And I don't want him to remember to, his memories of me on holiday or doing whatever we're doing, of, of being, Daddy always had an headache. That's my excuse. Hmm. I've got a headache. Mm-hmm. Um, Daddy never wanted to do anything... You know what I mean? Well, we always left places early. I don't, I don't, I don't like the idea of him picking up right. on my. And how, how clear are those ideas about his memories now? As you're telling me, yeah, I've got some good ideas of what they might be. Yeah, huh. think about it a lot. You have, you think about your son's memories of you. <laughs> Yeah, I, spec- I speculate on what they, I speculate on what they might be. Yeah. Mm. Right. Well, what's going on when you do that? Okay. So I don't know where to start here. Might be a good starting point. Okay. Let's try and tie all this together a little bit. So, when I said that I've done this to myself, mm-hmm. um, I will talk about this at length, listeners, at some point. <laughs> um, this goes back to about 2008. I went bankrupt and had a business for a couple of years. I was doing alright for myself. I went bankrupt. I spent the next few years just stressing out about that embarrassed about it ashamed of it mm-hmm. and it's all I talked about and up, up until recently I used, to own a, I used to own a nightclub that was my thing and I'd cram that into every conversation I had with somebody mm-hmm. so it's like what do you do for a living now it's like well I, I do X but I used to own a nightclub I'd cram it I'd fucking crowbar that into every conversation because I wanted people to know that I haven't always been <coughs> a failure, that I was doing alright for myself at one yeah. point. And 
one of the things that bothers me now is I'm not a fan of vacuous platitudes telling your kids they can do whatever they want in life. You can be whatever you want, yada, yada, yada. Because they're just words. Mm -hmm. I want my little boy to believe Mm -hmm. that he can do whatever he wants Mm -hmm. and that with hard work, he can make progress in life. But how is my little boy, or my little girl now for that matter, supposed to believe me when I tell them Mm -hmm. that they can do whatever they want in life? I can't even leave the fucking house without getting stressed out about it. So what sort of example is that Mm. to set for your kids? And what kind of example do you want to set? I want want them to be... Yeah, not afraid of the world. I don't want them to turn out like me. Mm. Mm. Especially this me. Mm. What kind of me do you want to turn out? Well, I I don't want them to turn out like me. I want them to turn out like... Everything I'm not, I want them to be... Everything you're not. Well, that's okay, that's probably an exaggeration. But... Yeah, I want them to feel like they can make their own way in the world, not end up with... I don't want to put my issues on them. I know... Are you doing that at the moment? I'm trying not to. Right. But I'm not... I don't know. Don't know. I don't know. Because I don't know what's... What they're going to remember. What they're going to pick up on. What they're going to intuit from the way I... What's your hunch from what you can detect right now? What are they picking up right now? Okay, just that, not that, I don't don't know if they'd articulate it this way, but the dad's a fucking loser. So you're picking up on them thinking that you're a fucking loser? Yeah. Um, what, what, What are you noticing there that's telling you that? Because it's, I think it's three things. My narrative, my story, has just been one of one constant fuck up after another. Then my physical example to them of what I, what I've produced in the world, is nothing. And then this, on top of it, struggling to just get out the fucking house sometimes. And just cope with life in general. It's like the icing on the cake. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's uh, what, 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 what do you mean by the icing on the cake? Well, I say that's a piss take, isn't it? I mean, it's one thing to have it's one thing to have made a few fuck ups. Mm-hmm. It's another thing to be in a position where you've not produced anything. There's nothing. There's not. You've got nothing to show for your efforts. That's so you've got nothing to show for your efforts and you've produced nothing. Mm. Is that sort of another thing you're sore about? Yeah, yeah. My, ki- my kids, what, what's this sounds like that? a... Sorry, go on. There's just so many properties, yeah. Well, I was, yeah, was going to say, this sounds like a platitude, but it's true. The only thing I've done right is my kids. Huh? And I do try my best with them. And I'm gonna, th- and, you know, I'm gonna fucking contradict myself now. Go on. I'm. I think I'm a pretty good dad. <laughs> <laughs> I think because I, I spend time with them when I can. I'm affectionate towards them. I make a conscious effort not to be one of those dads. I know those dads, dads that don't give a shit. No, that's dad. Yeah, not my dad. I mean, yeah. my dad was great. Right. Um, but I know contemporaries. Yeah. 
Yeah. Don't like that. I don't want to. Be, I don't want to be like that. So make a conscious effort to be a good dad, to have fun with them. Yada yada yada. What what went, happened there when you went yada yada yada? Well, it felt like I was yeah start, mm-hmm. starting to blow my own trumpet a bit. Right, blow your own trumpet. Yeah, but I've, I've I've made the point. I'm a good dad. Have you made the point? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. I, you were blowing your own trumpet, and you just went yada yada and stop yourself. Well, I could, I could sit here and list off loads of things that right. that I do with them. You could, yeah, I could. And it's, and but you don't want to, or you. I don't, I just don't feel the need to. You don't feel the need no, to. No, no, okay. Um. Hmm. But yeah, that's what I mean. At the same time, I guess it's that maybe. I guess I get. I guess I reconcile that contradiction by thinking that at home. I'm a good dad. Okay. But when we go out, that starts to okay. fall to pieces a little bit. And how does that sound? Yeah, that's shitty, because that's where life's at, isn't it? Out there, doing things out is, there. Is that right? Yeah, that's where the memories are created. I mean, I don't... Oh. I've got a, memories of my childhood. It's, you know, Blackpool, the beach, holidays. Okay. Do you know what I mean? There's not that many memories of sitting at home. Watching Bullseye or whatever. <laughs> right. So, yeah, they're the they're the they're the things I feel like. Oh, let me give you an example. Fucking hell, this eats away at me. This. Uh, oh, it's gonna sound it sounds stupid. This, I think. A couple of years ago, I went on holiday, and my little boy was into like well, he's still into like Marvel and stuff like that, and he said. All a couple of weeks before the holidays, he kept going on about when we go on the beach, you have to play Iron Man with me. He had these two Iron Man masks, and we were going to put the masks on, and we we're going to yeah have a a bit mm-hmm. of a, a step to on the beach. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he'd waited for that for weeks, and then when we got there, we got to the beach, we had the masks, and because I was in that mode again. Where I just wasn't feeling right. My head just wasn't in it. Mm-hmm. Got that, that kind of sickness, call it the yeah. sickness, come over me. And he wanted to play and I made some sort of silly excuse. Right. And, and I didn't do like it. That to pan out now? I don't know why that one eats away at me so much. Eats away? Yeah. That was a that was a moment when that's a perfect example. That was a moment when I could have been a good, a really good dad. I could have created that moment. What's going on there? Is he trying to imagine it? That's one of them moments that he might have remembered. Okay, and what would that moment look like? Just me and him dicking about on the beach, not giving a fuck. And are you thinking about that? Yeah. yeah, but I didn't do it. Okay, because. Yeah, my head wasn't in the right place. So no, Daddy's being a miserable fucker. Wasn't in the, where was your head? That's it. I d- just I'm not in the mood. I just feel in, right. What mood would you need? I think one of the reasons it eats away at me so much is I know better than to succumb to that. Uh-huh. I, that I should act, you act in spite of feeling like that. So right. yeah, you feel like shit. But this is your imagine, moment. Can you imagine doing that? I've done it before. I don't know why I didn't do it then. for the Iron Man mask and acted in spite of it. I should have done that. I've acted in spite so of my... Fe- should, yeah, go on. I've acted in spite of those feelings plenty of times, but I didn't do it then. Okay. And... I don't know why I didn't do it then. Maybe you just... It's easy to fob your family off, isn't it? And we'll do it again another time. Well, what popped into your head when you said that? That it's it's, it's, you can fob you. Yeah, you can put it off till another time. Right, you, you can put it off. Yeah, and that... Compared to... what? Where, when can't you put it off? You shouldn't ever put it off. Right. That's what I mean. You shouldn't fucking put it off. Uh, you telling me that? I, I, I'm i telling... I, yeah, I'm... T- you, you, sh- you, know, you, you don't know when it's... You don't know when you, 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 your number's up, do you? 
So when you get those little opportunities to make those memories, you should take it regardless of how you feel. Because what matters most is him and him remembering that time me and my dad messed about on the beach and he remembers that. But because of me, you don't, fuck all, there's no memory there, it's nothing. How's it going? Like we've been talking for quite a while about various topics. How's it all going? I feel a little bit like I feel a bit all over the place. To be honest, okay. I don't feel like I'm honing in on anything. Okay. Or, I'm saying some things out loud that I wouldn't have necessarily said before, but it's nothing I've not thought about before. Okay. And do you want to be honing in on something? Yeah. Well, what's important about honing in for you? <laughs> I just want to be able to... go out... And not have to worry or not have to prepare for feeling like shit at some point. That's because then the amount of things I could do. So you do prepare for feeling like shit at the moment? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's it. You really, yeah. Yeah, but how much do you prepare? Oh, fuck it, I'm on it. I know, it's like, the moment I know I'm going somewhere, mm-hmm. right, fuck's sake, here we go. And so, to give me a rough idea of how long and how much you prepare for your life shit. I don't, interesting, there's sort of a correlation between how much preparation I do with how much of an expedition it's going to be. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, like, we're going on holiday in a couple of weeks, for a week. And I've been thinking about that. Mm-hmm. Started thinking about that a couple of months back. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas if I was just nipping out somewhere for half an hour, mm-hmm. you know, 30 okay. seconds before I go out, it'd be... Uh, and how much preparation would be right? <laughs> I don't know, because you know, I, I, don't, I don't know what... I don't know what I'm preparing for. I don't, don't know. know no, I don't know what I'm preparing for. I don't know what purpose it serves. I don't know what purpose it serves. It doesn't fucking change anything. And how sure are you about that? I'm a hundred percent sure. Well, what's what you actually scanning over there as you're working out is a hundred percent. I'm thinking there are times when. I've had to go out without notice, spontaneously. Mm-hmm. There's been no preparation, mm-hmm. and I just have to go out. Mm-hmm. Still happens. I still give it a, an hour, two hours max, and that's it. My head's gone mm-hmm. every time. So it doesn't matter whether I prepare or I don't. If I go out, I'm out there for a couple of hours, especially around people. Right. Fuck me. Right. If around a crowd of people, yeah, right. my head's gone in an hour or two. Okay. Do you want to talk about being around people or do you want to talk? <laughs> yeah. Or something different. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I've told you about this running a uh, run a mental health support group, uh-huh. and <laughs> I've been doing that for about three years now. And I think I'm done with it. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do it anymore. Mm-hmm. And one of the, I think one of the reasons is that I started the group because when the agoraphobia was real bad, was starting to get to the point where I couldn't leave the house. I needed something to get me out of the house. Mm-hmm. And I thought that going out and socialising would be good exposure therapy. Mm-hmm. It'd get me used to going out again. Mm-hmm. I thought if I could get myself used to being in a room of 50 people, which mm-hmm. is what the group sometimes gets like, mm-hmm. then, you know, going and getting a lot of breath from the same would be a piece of piss. Mm-hmm. 
but it's three years later it still fucking stresses me out as much as it ever did and I've started to wonder whether it's whether I've conflated agoraphobia with this idea of socialising because I don't know if I care about socialising I don't know if I care about going out and being around people what are you noticing there so you're not caring about it? I feel like I feel like it makes me a bit of a miserable shit to be honest like a bit of a social rattlesnake but I'm alright with it I don't care that I don't care about that it's not for me. Not a fan of crowds. Don't like going out. I prefer one on one, two or three people. That's my kind of social situation. And I don't know if doing this has had the opposite effect of the desired effect. What what are you noticing that's so telling me it's had the opposite? I feel like I've possibly been doing something that has just been stressing me out. Not because it's a phobia or there's any pathology attached to it. I'm just not that sort of person. It's just not for me. Right. And try to force myself to do it and go out and be around loads of people... And be this group organiser that yeah. looks after everyone else. And yeah. I don't know if it's just right. stressed me out. Okay. It's added to the problem. Because yeah. so I don't what, want to do it in the first place. So what kind of person are you then? I'm a very... I'm a loner. I mean that in the best possible way. Mm. I'm very fond of that. The hardest part... One of the hardest parts of this past few years for me was like I just described. I went through a period of not being able to be on my own. I've always been... A loner who doesn't want to be... Can't be on his own. Yes. That's... I've always loved being by myself. Right. Being in my own company. In my own head was my favourite place uh, right. to be as That's a right. teenager. Into my early mid and in, in, in mid twenties, just being on my own, loved it, fucking yeah. loved it, yeah. and losing that yeah. fucked me up. I don't like, I don't like that, and and um. And how are you do? What's, what's going on? <laughs> um. Well, I don't know if I, I I've, I've sort of been waiting for this. This idea of conflicting goals to, to sort of creep up on me. I don't know if I maybe I maybe I found one. I've got the sort of a genesis of an idea here, which is Don't overthink it, just tell me when Yeah, okay, I won't overthink it. I'm just I'm just thinking that I, I'm I'm not romanticising that at all. From being a teenager, I just I love being by myself. Right. Being in my own company reading, that that sort of person. That was yeah. me, and I loved it. And then, the reason the monophobia kicked in was after getting... Started with panic attacks, and then in the early part of 2015, I had a bit of a, a period of suicidal ideation. Right. And didn't last long, but after that, I, I really didn't trust myself. I right. worried that I might act on okay. some sort of impulses. Yeah. And so I don't like, I've never got back there. I've never got back to enjoying being on my own. I'm over it. I don't distrust myself in my own company anymore. It's not the same. I don't, I don't like being on my own the same as I used to, but also I don't fucking like being around hmm. people. Yeah. <laughs> and you've got a real laugh there. Yeah, well, that's that. There's conflict there, isn't there? Jesus, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's a problem. What makes you 
That's the problem. That's the... I wish I could go back to that. But kind of like what I said before. So how much are you enjoying being on your own at the moment? I don't enjoy it. I'm just... So zero. Yeah, I, do, I, I don't dislike it. I don't fear it the same. So right. when it when it was bad and I didn't really right. like being on my own, I'd sedate myself and go to bed. Right. So my, like, my missus used to go right. to her parents for the weekend with the kids. Mm-hmm. On a Friday night till Sunday night, mm-hmm. I'd sedate myself with paracetamol and I'd just fucking stay in bed because right. I wanted to avoid okay. being on my own as much as possible. So you don't do that? No, I don't do that anymore. You but don't I don't enjoy I, it either? No, I don't enjoy it. It's just... I just and you used to enjoy it a lot. Oh, I fucking loved it. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, I loved it. What was popped in your head when you said? I, I'm just I'm, I'm I'm remembering all the things I used to do by myself. Yeah. Just sit and listen to music, read, write. I used to go out running. Yeah. Um, meditation, or just anything, anything that was just me by myself. Loved it. Not so much anymore. You loved it and you just kind of sort of clicked it off. Yeah, that's it's it's gone. It's gone. Yeah. What? what? I don't what? enjoy those things anymore. And what, what made you just sort of go and flick and I don't enjoy that? Like I say, it's just, it's it's like the person I was my entire life just disappeared. That quickly? In a matter of a couple of weeks, okay. like I say. I went through that period of it and to suddenly be your own best friend hmm. to being, well... Your own worst enemy, <laughs> or huh. n- no? Seriously, to go f- from being your own best friend to distrusting yourself. Yeah, that's. And where's the trust right now in yourself? I don't know because this is why I'm not sure. I believe in the idea of making a full recovery because I kind of feel that I don't know that whether I'm going to ever go back there again. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much control over you, I've got over... Do you want to go back there again? Uh, sorry, what I specifically mean is I don't know about going back to getting in a bad place again. Oh, yeah. I don't know if that's going to happen to me again. Okay. I can't. I also feel like so, looking over your shoulder okay. on so you're guard. you're still worried about going back to that place again? Yeah. And you're also not sure whether you, whether you want to go back to... Enjoy your own company. Oh no, that's that's if I could. If you could. If I could go back to being enjoying my own company, reveling in it the same way I used to. That made you say reveling. Because that's what I did. Yeah. And I don't know that this idea of I don't know whether this past few years has been sort of an exercise in trying to turn myself into somebody I'm not. If I go yeah. out and be sociable, be that person, I go out and I do things and socialise and. So where are you up to with that right now? I'm not further than I ever was. I'm not into it. <laughs> it's not, not not for me. Even when I owned a nightclub, mm. I used to sit upstairs on my own. I was the boss. I used to sit upstairs on my own mm. and just mm. let, let the club do its thing and that's how it ran. I wasn't down there socialising with people or anything yeah. like that. And that was never the appeal, really, mm. to do that. Mm. So. The appeal? What is the appeal? Well, the appeal back then at 23 years old was money. And what what appeals to you these days? Probably getting back to there. The two things. Three things. Would be if I could feel content and relaxed in my own company again that'd be fucking awesome (laughs) if I could achieve something that made up for that fucking that business up and going bankrupt Hmm. and if I could just go out and about with my kids without that Sickness coming over me. And then are these all there's there? my paradise right there. Okay. <laughs> What's that like seeing that now? Bittersweet. Bittersweet. Yeah. 
bittersweet because it's it doesn't feel like too much to ask. You know, I'm not asking to be a billionaire playboy on a yacht, snorting coke on some strippers' tits or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Quite modest goals. Mm-hmm. And they feel, even though in an objective sense they should be easily achievable, subjectively, feel a fucking million miles away. Are they all as far as each other? Yeah. They're all... They're a million miles away. And they're all about a million miles away. Yeah. None of them are like two million or half a million. <laughs> no, it's not... Yeah, there's no... It, it feels... No difference. No. So all three of them are kind of extremely far away, but equal distance away from you. Feeling relaxed in your own company, but being okay with your kids and achieving something to make up for your bankruptcy. Okay. Yeah. That last one feels further away. Okay. Yeah, it does. How much further? Inachievably far away. Hmm. I've got no faith in myself of of, of achieving that, and that how, one. And how does that suit you? Not great. Right. No. Awful. <laughs> yeah, awful. Yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I don't, and, then, like and does that feel, not achieving the makeup for the bankruptcy, bankruptcy, does that feel more awful or less awful than not achieving being relaxed by yourself or being relaxed with the Not me. Yeah, no, if I had to pick, if I had to pick a goal that I could achieve, genuinely, it would be that my kids just, when they're older, they think I'm a good dad. Okay. They think I did all right, that I yeah. did good. So right now, that's more important than being relaxed in your own company or making up for your bankruptcy. Yes. Okay. But strangely, they them two are tied in. It feels oh, like if I don't, it, well, if I don't, if I don't sort them out, my kids might not be able to. What, how are you working that? What's well, especially with the, the producing something cobbling some sort of career together or whatever. That's the only way that I can demonstrate to my kids. That's the only way? Yes. It's the only I'm way. I'm really sure about that. Yes. It's the only way I can demonstrate to my kids that they can... They can achieve things in life. They can believe me when I tell them. Right. That they can... That's the only way Yeah. they can believe you when you tell them yeah. that they can achieve things. I told you, Warren, I don't believe in platitudes. Yeah. I don't believe in just yeah. words. You've got would, to set an example. Would they achieve things if, if you didn't? Probably try and tell it, them yeah, it's, 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 po- it's possible. Of course it's possible. You know, people do that all the time. But... What, what, what makes you want to be telling them? What makes me want to tell them that they can Make, achieve? Yeah. Because I told you I don't want them to end up like me. Okay, and you, and you're sure that they will un- end up like you, as you are now, or as fucking any any part of it, right? <laughs> really? Yeah. So you you you're telling them. And, and let me. I just want to. Cla- I'm not down. I'm not being down on myself uh-huh. with that. Very just from a very pragmatic sense, I've made bad decisions okay. as as, okay. I've, as I've gone okay. along in life, and. And, you and, I, and, and I know you where it's got to me. I don't, yeah. And I know, I know they've got to make bad decisions. You do know they've got to make bad decisions. I know they've got to make bad decisions, but they don't, I don't want them to make the same bad decisions. I don't want them to make the kind of bad decisions right. that will lead them to where I am up here okay. in my head and are you, now. Are you thinking that they're going to make similar bad decisions to you? I don't know. I just I want to do everything to avoid it. You want to do everything to avoid it? Yeah. 
I want them to be happy. I d- the idea happy of... Happy or... Is that the same thing? <laughs> Being happy and <laughs> avoiding your bad decisions. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Go on. Go on, no, no. (laughs) (laughs) It's just that, isn't it? It's... I I, I can kind of look back on things and say, well, that was a fucking terrible idea and mm, you shouldn't have done that. And it's all compounded. Like I say, I I know I've done this to myself. Too much thinking, too much self blame, mm-hmm. just getting on at myself too much, mm-hmm. and carrying around too Is much that regret. You still do? Oh, fucking all the time. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm always too much thinking, too much self blame, and getting on at yourself. Yeah, I'm always on about. I'm always on about the the past. Like I say, I don't tell You're people. Always on about the past. Yeah, to myself. Yeah. How do you do that to yourself? I just, I think about it all the time. In your head. Yeah. Think about it all the time. Think about the past all the time. All the time. Yeah. All the time. All, well, how obviously. Much, <laughs> come on, you know, you know the score. Yeah. How much um, of the time do you, do you think all of that? Oh, is? yeah, no, a lot. A lot. It's, it, it's there. It's, um. It, it, fa- it factors into a lot of. A lot of my decision making and right. just just a lot of especially time time by myself. Mm. Um, I don't do reminiscing very good and and looking back at old photos and stuff like mm-hmm. that because mm-hmm. it yeah it bothers me. Okay. So, how much do you want to think about the past? What would be about the right amount? At the moment, you do. It. Nearly all the time. How much do you think's about right? Well, about as much as most, I'm going to use the word normal <laughs> people would. When you what can just, be for you? when you just, you, you get together every now and again, you're with someone and just fondly recall the past. Okay. Look at some photographs, so things that's like with that. With another person. Yeah, How I'll, much do you I'll, want to go over it in your head? Oh, I'd rather um, just. I'd rather just have done with it. I know there's nothing you can do not about do it. it. At all. Yeah, not do it at all. Especially the the, the r- running over regret and the bad decisions right. and stuff like that. Right. No point in that. There's no point. There's no point in it. I know. I know. There's no point in it, but you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. What's that about? I haven't got a clue. I haven't got a clue. Going over the regret, regret, the bad decisions. What do you think you've, you've I've extrapolated plenty of information from it and Okay. You know, I feel like I could write a manual, don't do this you know okay. don't do this, that and the other. I know that. Okay. And if, is the is the manual sorted or is there still things to add to it? <laughs> well there's always things to add to that manual. There's always there's always things to add to the manual. How are you gonna know when to stop writing the manual? When the manual's kind of good enough. I just write. <laughs> well, I'm going to contradict myself. Well, I was going to say the manual's never written, is it? It's never written. It's never written. That's what life is. Do you, Do you want to? I mean, but I'm thinking. I'm saying. I'm, I'm on the one hand. I'm going. Oh well, I want to just stop it and not think about it. And but on the other hand, I'm saying. Well, of course, you're going to carry on making mistakes for the rest of your life and just carry on learning from them. But huh? And how do those two? Um. I don't know, you say on the one hand you can you, what you should do is just make your mistake, learn from it, kind of put it in the memory bank as a as a point of reference. Mm-hmm. We know not to do that again. But you don't need to keep going back over it in your downtime. Like mm-hmm. I could sit and watch Netflix or Whatever. Well, instead, what I'll do is sit here and think about all the times I fucked up. Right. Well, what's the point in that? What is the point? In it? I haven't got a clue. I don't know why I do it. What, what? I, nice do, I, ge- I genuinely don't know why I do it. I don't know whether it's. Um, I don't know whether I feel like I'm just trying to squeeze every last uh-huh. 
morsel of information out of it, whether I feel okay. like there's something I haven't quite figured out that might help me, or whether I'm just being a self-pitying twat. Should we talk about both of those things? Mm-hmm. So the squeezing the last morsel of information out of something... And the self-pitying. Mm. Which, which of those do you like? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know that either... When I ho- to kind of hold both of them in mind at the same time, neither of them necessarily feels like an issue. It's not evoking mm. anything from me. Mm. So don't feel that like an issue that yourself that you pity yourself too much, or that you squeeze every last morsel of information out of something. Yeah, me. I mean, I don't know if maybe pity is not the right word. I don't pity myself, but I am pissed off at myself. Mm-hmm. That's a better word. I am pissed off at myself. I've always said if we could go back, if we could get my twenty-five-year-old self mm-hmm. in an MMA cage, I would kick the fuck out of him. He'd be physically stronger than me, but I'm that pissed at him, I'd leather him. How do you see this panning out, this fight? I see a fucking idiot that was just... Are you still hitting him at the moment? Oh, I'd, lo- I'd honestly look Warren. Pardon? Honestly, Warren, I'd love to twat him. When you say twat him, how far are you... I, I, I mean... Are you... You've got weapons, or is it just fists? Or? Oh, I wouldn't do that to him. Okay, well, what will happen then? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's me, isn't it? I know it's a doppelganger yeah. or whatever, but I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't take it that far. But um, it's very much like you fucking did this. Okay. I'm where I am now. I'm right. struggling. So you're I'm, having, I'm having panic attacks in fucking Sainsbury's. Yeah. Because of you making some fucking stupid decisions. Right. And is this, uh, you're saying this to him having leathered him? <laughs> well, I don't, I, 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 I don't feel like, I don't ever, I don't really ever sit there and imagine myself back, when, hitting myself. When I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about it now and it seems ridiculous, but there's a definite resentment okay. there. I mean, that, that, and it's, it's an, that, and you're putting that into words. I'm just, I just feel it. I feel resentment. Okay. For past decisions. Yeah. But, and you started just actually pointing and having a go there. Did I? Yeah. Did I? Fucking hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not really that way inclined huh. of, of, of physical violence. Huh. But I would twat him. Okay. Feels like the other way to get it out. Okay. And what and what happens after you twatted him? I don't know, maybe he fuck it maybe he just sort himself out a little bit and make some better decisions. Yeah. Just uh What what I'm most pissed off about is I, kn- I knew better with some when I'm, when I'm talking about, it sounds a bit nebulous now, when I'm talking about these bad decisions, the bad business decisions that I made that led mm-hmm. to me losing my business, mm-hmm. and I knew better, I knew better, it you, wasn't, it wasn't... You did know better. Yeah, I knew better, I knew at the time I shouldn't have been doing some of the things I was doing, okay. and that's what kind of makes it, makes it harder to deal with. If it was just purely a little daft ass just winging it, and accidentally stumbling across these bad decisions, that would be easier to deal with. But I knew better. I knew what I was doing. I knew I was making stupid decisions. You knew you were making stupid decisions. I did at the time, yeah. To make them, make them. Okay. Well, I don't feel like I'm at that level anymore where that's... Uh... You know, back then I was... I, I was I was dealing with a lot of money. I was running a business. I had a building around me that I built myself. Mm-hmm. Literally. Mm-hmm. Um, not the actual building. I refurbished it myself. I couldn't afford people to come in and do it for me. I built the nightclub 
me and my mate built it from scratch. Mm-hmm. And it was all me. I produced something, I was running something, and there was something at stake. Mm-hmm. Whereas now, I'm a 35 year, well, 35 in a couple of weeks, I'm a 35 year old podcaster. Mm-hmm. <laughs> With a blog. Mm-hmm. What sort of career is that? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not earning fuck all from it. I'm hoping to, but it's not getting me anywhere now. Uh, so I don't feel like I'm making, I don't feel like I'm making important decisions in the same way. There's nothing at stake when there's... Right. And is that what you want right now? To have something at stake? Yeah, I want, I want, yeah I, want, I want to create something that matters, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do. What, 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 what are you noticing there? I just like, I, 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 I like the idea of, I like the idea of creating something that matters. That, uh-huh. well, it sorts a, number, a couple of things out. I'd feel like I'd made up for losing the business. My kids would have something because I'd be able to point to something and say, I worked my ass off for that and I created something. And you can do the same. Okay. Not just believe me because I say okay. so. And where are you up to with creating some matters right now? Um, I don't know. I mean, I've got... I don't know how many episodes we're in. 25 episodes in. I've got a website. I get the occasional email off people saying they really enjoyed the episode or whatever and it helped them and stuff. And that's really nice. Um... But what's the but? What happened with the but? Well, we live in a world where you've got bills to pay, and mm-hmm. you know we're encapsulated in a financial system, mm. and it's nice to help people. Mm-hmm. It's great, but I sometimes wonder whether it would be just better for me to just knock it on the head and just go get a fucking job. It's not a proper job. How do you weigh that? How do you weigh that up? Helping people versus getting paid. I don't know. It's a tricky one, isn't it? Because I'm not qualified. If I if I went and got a job, it would be a dead end job. I've got no qualifications. I've got nothing of any value to offer anyone. Really, you know, I could go and be a cleaner. <laughs> could go work at McDonald's, things like that. Nothing against those jobs, right? Just not for me. And I don't feel that working as a cleaner or whatever is going to be a good demonstration to my kids that they can achieve whatever they want in life. What job do you actually want? Um, This facilitates what I like doing. So what I like doing is writing. Mm-hmm. I've done that since I was a teenager, um, and I've loved it. But again, I've, I've never, I've never gone down that road too far because it's like owning a fucking lottery ticket, isn't it? Well, the idea of making a career as a writer, everyone's a fucking writer nowadays. The chances of it um, actually turning into a, a paid gig is minimal. So I've always kind of avoided it. You've got to be pragmatic. I've got bills to pay and I've got kids now. I can't piss fat about just trying to be a writer. Um, but this facilitates it a little bit. Um, and so I, I, I like, I do like the path that I'm on. Hmm. And I've got... What were you noticing there? You talked about the path that you're on. I think I'm alright at this. I think I'm pretty good at it. I'm not bad. I'm I'm I'm, I'm all right at converting people. I'm all right at doing research and um, kind of grasping concepts pretty quick in order to be able to interview people and convey information. I've been through the ringer. I've got lived experience. I can offer people. Um, I think the reason this sort of feels right to me is well, I've just said to you I'm not qualified to do anything, and I'm not. But I am qualified to be an agoraphobic. I am qualified to be fucked in the head and to understand what that's qualified. like. Qualified? Yeah, I'm qualified. I, I've been through the ringer mm. and I've... You've been I've, through it or you are in it? Oh, I'm still in it. <laughs> but... 
But I, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm, I feel confident about conveying that information and sharing that with people, and I've got yeah. I've got no shame around it. I don't. And is the qualification something you get from having gone through it, or do you get the qualification from having it now? Well, both. Okay. Because the way I think of it is, I've. I've I've been through the worst of it and I've been at that point where something's happening to me where I don't know what the fuck's going on. And I know a lot of people are in that space at the moment, don't know what's happening to them. And I, well, I've been there and I can kind of help people with, with that side of it. But also I'm still stuck in it, so I'm not preaching from some pulpit, like some self-help guru. Like, I cured myself and everything's great and just take this special blend of herbs and spices for thirty nine ninety nine, and everything will be alright for you. I'm still in it. So. Yeah. And where are you? You're, this other person's in the pulpit and sort of pontificating. What, what are you? <laughs> I feel like I'm in the weeds a bit still. Uh-huh. Can you see above the weeds or are they? Well, that's it. I kind of feel like, and I meet, I'm, I'm, I meet people like this at the, the support group that are lost. Okay. And scared to death, and they don't know what's happening to them. Uh-huh. And, what are and you? I, well, well, I'm able to say, well, yeah, I've I've been there, uh-huh. and you know, so it's the, there. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Like I say, uh-huh. now I'm living in spite of still struggling, whereas before yeah. I wasn't. So you can see the light at the moment. Yeah, I think so. I, I, I've not got, even though I said to you that I feel that I'm not sure. If you can completely be cured, if that's the right word, or completely fix yourself, I feel like this kind of these experiences scar you because you can't forget them. Mm-hmm. Um, and but I don't feel hopeless about it either, mm-hmm. and that's mainly from the fact that how many scars have you got? Mental scars. Hmm. I don't know, I've never quantified them, really. But I feel... Just what, anything that makes you... Anything that makes you flinch, that's what I'd, I'd consider a... Kind of being scarred by it. Anything that makes you flinch. Anything that makes you flinch and makes you realise, oh, you know, kind of... That's got, that's got a reference point in the past. And you've got all those scars. I've got plenty of those. And can you can you see those scars if you want to? What do you mean by well, that? Well, can you see the scars? Or do you mean can I identify the content of of each thing that remains? Is that what you mean? I'm not sure quite what I mean. I'm just trying to use the word scar. I'm just trying yeah. to help you think. Yeah, about I. I what how you experience that? Well, from a, a scar, so from, from I suppose from like a a metaphorical standpoint, it would be like like a dog that's been beaten. Okay, it mine. It might get a new owner, and the owner might treat it well, it might come to trust humans again. Mm. But every time that hand comes in for the stroke, it's going to flinch. There's a flinch there. Mm. And that's kind of what I feel, that's what I mean by being scarred by your past experiences. Okay. And, and that's like you? Yeah. That's what I mean every time, every time I've got to go out, like, oh, you know. That's that's a big flinch, but these smaller ones as well, the ones that I don't feel I'm de- dealing with anymore, still now, when I know I'm going to be left on my own. Whereas before it was like, oh, <laughs> can't wait for this. Like, I've, I've, I've got yeah. me time. Now it's a bit like, ugh, okay. What, 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 what's that for you? It's just, it, it's, that, it's that recall of those time spent by myself just wondering what am I safe in my own company? What am I going to do to myself? So 
when you say the recall, mm. what, what do you actually return? Remember it. Just yeah, do you get those coming back as you're telling them? Yeah. 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 I don't mean like flashbacks that come out of the blue. They're not. No, what? Well, I, I was going to say they're not like. I'm not saying it's the same as like a, you know, a fucking soldier who's had a grenade go off next to his head, and so that. What is it like for you? It's a. It's a. That's it. It's a. It's not a flashback. It's a. It's it's a recall. It's a reminder. It's a prompt. And how, how clear is this recall? Oh, yeah, plenty vivid. Plenty vivid, yeah. Okay. For, that's what I mean for how everything. How long do they last? I think the mo- the, it's it's mo- it's momentary. It's it's fleeting, but it's like a it's not that the same as a sinking feeling. Mm-hmm. Get the sinking feeling, and then it's not like I'll sit there thinking about these things constantly, but it's enough to set me off okay. and put me in 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 that mode. I feel like I'm talking very... So there's a clear recall, a sinking feeling, mm. and then you're in a different mode. Yes. That's what I mean by being scarred by things from the past. Okay. It's something prompts, something in the present reminds you of something in the past, yeah. and then it, the m- m- mode switches. The mode and it, switches. And it, spo- it spoils, it's, maybe, it maybe just spoils the moment. Yeah. Or maybe it creates the mood for the next couple of hours. But I wouldn't right. be able to... So just just that recall, mm. but it's a clear recall, and that that's kind of down feeling. Yeah. Then that sets the mood for the next... Yeah, it can, yeah that's what I mean. It can be... And what, what, while we're talking about it now, what's it doing? I'm just sort of... For the first time in this conversation, I feel like I'm hashing out an idea that I've not properly articulated to myself before. Okay. I feel like I'm riffing now, okay. rather than laying out a kind of a fully articulated idea. Okay. But I'm, yeah, in response to that question, I was just running through all the times I was trying to identify what my prompts are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And are you running through the recalls as well? Yeah. Okay. Kind of matching them all up, what my prompts right. are and what the re- what the recall would be. Mm-hmm. What what's the, what's the present moment experience that I might have that would trigger a memory? which would then put me in a mood. That's what I'm trying to... That's the kind of conceptual equation I'm trying to okay. put together now. And what's it like from from the inside as you're doing that? What? I don't know. I don't know. That's what I mean. I've not quite... I've not really thought about that one. Before, okay. in that sense, in a very, pro- no, 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 I really thought about that in a very process oriented way mm-hmm. before. Mm-hmm. Where, where do you want to go with it now? I, d- I, I don't think I've got anything else to say. Without without you prompting me now, mm-hmm. yeah. Without you prompt, if you unless you prompted me with a question now, I feel like I've given myself plenty to chew on. 
there. Yeah. Hmm. You, you know the end of the session, don't you? You know when it is. You tell me you want, want to round up now. What was that? Yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm, yeah. Sure? Yeah, I think I want to round up. I'm, I'm intrigued now to step out of this this paradigm and then maybe examine it a little 